Hi there, this is Running Pack. Today we'll be making a notebook from scratch. I sketched out some design for the cover and I end up deciding to use just a cartoon icon in the middle of the book. And the one I'm picking is my favorite character from Ice Maze. I learned how to make a book from Rocco Lee and I will leave the link in the description below. So first I fold all the printing paper in half to form a folio. I'm going to use a total of 60 sheets of printing paper, which makes 60 folios. And I pick up every 6 folio and stack them together to make it into a signature. And I decided to make this notebook because I need a new one, so then I thought why not just make one for myself. So you may or may not wondering, um, why don't I just stack six pieces of paper together and then fold them in half? And here's the difference. So if you fold six sheets of paper all at once, it will be a lot thicker because they will be folding on the same spot. While if you make into the folio first, it will be a lot thinner because the spine is slightly separated. So one way or another, you can choose whichever you like. And next, I stack all the signatures up and put it in between two flat boards. You can use book or you can use magazine. Here I'm using my bookshelves. I make sure they are aligned before clipping them together. So on the car stack, I marked four spots where there's going to be hole punched. And this step, you have to make sure that on the spine of every single signature has the mark. And yes, I'm going to use sewing method for book binding, but there are also a few other options if you don't want to use sewing. So you can do stapling, you can um, open the signature and then step hold the middle of the signature and then stack them back up and then move on to the gluing part or you can instead of making folios into signatures to stack all of them up and then moving on to the gluing process and i think the sewing will be the most stable so that's why i will be doing the sewing method so I use an all to punch holes on all the marks for every signature. And I'm just using a needle and thread that I use for leather working. So the thread has to be pre-waxed and the thread that I use for leather working happens to be pre-waxed. And for the length, I did not using too much so I'm not sure exactly how much you need but having more than you thought would definitely be safer. And here I'm using the yellow thread because I don't have white ones. But the thread that shows in the book on flipping it, so the white thread would definitely work the best. So pull the thread all the way through the first hole from the outside. And here I'm using some washi tape to tape down so I don't accidentally pull it away. I next stitch through the second hole from the inside to outside and the third one from the outside to inside and also the fourth from the inside to outside and the first signature is done sewing and then you flip the signature to where the needle comes from the bottom hole and now it's going to be the first hole so have the needle went through the first hole of the new signature and then went through the second hole of the new signature on the inside and also went through the previous signature of the second hole from the outside and then went back through the third hole of the previous signature into the new signature
and next went through the fourth hole of the new signature but now went through the previous one so the thread will end now come out from the spine remove the washi tape and here you'll be doing a square knot so it's just two simple knots that's tied from the opposite direction Moving on to the next signature so make sure the first signature is always at the bottom while the thread is going from the bottom as well so here will be all the scent going through the first hole of the new signature and go through the second hole from the inside of the new signature into the previous signature on the second hole went back from the third hole and go through the fourth hole of the new signature but not into the previous signature And now the new signature is attached. Here we'll be doing a new type of knot. Go around the needle under the neighboring stitch and pull the thread all the way. And there's only a loop left. And you will pull the needle through the loop to form a knot. Continue the same process as the third signature and finish until the last one attached. And here we're doing two half hitches so I'm not really sure the difference between this one and the twice the same stitching we've been doing so I'm just doing the previous knot twice you cut the thread off into about one inches long left also cut the strap of cheesecloth and that's going to be glued onto the spine and then sandwich the book block with the bookshelves again and I'm going to use a lot of PVA glue to give it a pretty thick coat and also glue on the cheesecloth And after I finish all the gluing process, I put it back into the middle of the bookshelf and also put a lot of weight on it and we'll be letting it dry overnight. The next day, uh, I also put some parchment paper in case the glue leaking or damped the paper. Next, I'm going to use two construction paper to make the end paper. Grab two sheets at the end of the book and then you'll sandwich it with the construction paper and then glue it down. So the better way of doing this is actually not just using glue but also some double sided tape on the march so it's a lot easier to squeeze it in and also make it easier to be aligned but I don't have any double sided tape so, so I'm trying my best just be using some PVA glue And then send it back in between the bookshelves 
and put more weight on it and we'll let that dry overnight. Now the boot block is all finished and we'll be moving on to make the cover. I'm using vegetable tan leather to make the cover and I use laser printer to print out the icon that I drew. For the cover, I want to do some watercolor style. So I have, I have royal blue, light blue, purple, and pink. So I'm basically just use wool balls to brush over the leather to give it that watercolor brush texture. So you, you may or may not notice that the book is open from left because I'm a lefty and I prefer to use my notebook as the opening from the left. So I always use store-bought notebook upside down or backward forth and since I'm making this one from scratch so I might as well just add it into the way I prefer. And I finalize it with some gold paint to give it a little bit more highlight. And finally apply a layer of leather conditioner. And we'll let this dry overnight. The next day, I use leather finisher to finish the cover. And next, I first made a stencil for how big the cover is going to be by wrapping a sheet of construction paper around the boot block to get the exact length. You will want the length of the leather to be long enough when the book is folded instead of when it was opened. Because the length for the cover when it's folded is longer than when it's opened. So use the stencil and cut out the right size of the leather. Then flip to the back. And I'm going to dye all the March black. So this is going to make it look nicer when the boot block is attached. So finish all the edge with some leather finish gum. And I also drew the lines where the spine is going to be and use some water on those lines and fold those up. And next, attach the boot block onto the cover. So here I'm just using contact glue all over the end page, the end paper, and glue it onto the cover. Here I'm just kind of eyeballing it. And make sure the, the spine is not glued up because the length 
for the cover is longer when it's folded than when it's open. When the book is open, there is some space that the leather can stretch along the spine. And next, I sandwich back in between the bookshelves and put on the weight and let it dry overnight again. So this is not just to make the glue dry, but also shape the leather better. That's how I made a notebook in front of scraps. This is my first time making a book from completely paper, and there are some flaws in there, but I'm pretty happy with the result. So for this notebook, I didn't make any attachment on the cover itself because I'm going to use this as a sketchbook. So I prefer to have a book that can lay flat. So if there's other attachment, it's going to make the bag a little bit bumpy. So instead of making attachment, here I'm going to make an accessory. So this will work as a book strap and also a pencil case. So just simply cut out a rectangle piece of leather and also the strap. So I first stitch one end of the strap onto the leather piece and on the other end of the leather strap, I attach the bottom on. Here I'm marking down two spots. So one is where the strap can hold place when it's looping around the whole book. And the other one is for the strap to loop around the front cover and attach two buttons on and this is the other half of the button we have on the strap so if you don't understand what I'm saying right now you'll see it soon clearly So next I glue the zipper on and I also have a piece of fabric uh, and fold all the edges in. Next fold the leather piece in half, glue it down and finish the edges. And now the pencil case is all done. So I have two buttons attachment on the pencil case so I can loop the strap around the book and there is the button that I can snap on and another button for the strap to just go around the front cover. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to subscribe and I'll be seeing you in the next one.